got Matthew Evans. He's a year nine student at Brighton Grammar, and he's a man after my own heart, because I love lighthouses. <laughs> Uh, good evening ladies and gentlemen, uh, I'm Matt Evans and I am a Year 9 student uh, at Brighton Grammar School. Um, I'll just tell you a little bit about myself, I love everything and I uh, live in life and if, if I'm not enjoying life then there's no point. So I've got to try and do something to keep myself happy. So. <laughs> <laughs> You're a good start. Um, Yeah, so today I'm speaking to you about uh, King Island. Now, many of you may have heard of uh, King Island products like uh, um, meats and dairies. Um, King Island cheese, uh, my dad loves uh, blue vein cheese. Anyway, um, uh, King Island, not many of you have, would have the opportunity to have been there. And trust me, King Island is just so different. It's it is very small. Well, first, I'll tell you about it. First. King Island is uh, located in Bass Strait between uh, Victoria and Tasmania. It is the se uh, second biggest of, 200, uh, of 126 islands uh, in Bass Strait. It's only 64 k's um, from north to south, and only uh, 25 k's uh, across, with uh, um, an area of uh, only 110,000 hectares. Um, it is located in the Roaring Forties. And it can um, it's get bat it gets battered by winds of 100 kilometres per hour, which is um, which bothers you. Why would you live on the island? It's, you get battered by it every day. Um, as I said, it's famous for its uh, livestock, and it produces uh, a lot of meat and uh, dairy products. Uh, just um, what we uh, this is the map of King Island. It's basically, um, the first picture was uh, of Cape and uh, Lighthouse, which is at the top at the very top uh, there. And it's one of my favourite uh, uh, destinations on King Island because it has a real um, spectacular view as you saw. Um, what do we do on King Island? Well, a group of uh, Brighton Grammar uh, boys each term go up to King Island to complete uh, approximate uh, 100k hike uh, around the island, uh, the north part of the island, um, and uh, camp at uh, various sites including the uh, Cape Wickham White House. Uh, we also do activities like um, bird watching and looking at the rest, um, species of bird, which I found very, um, very interesting because it's something that I'm not used to doing, but I found uh, to enjoy it because of trying something new. And uh, what we came across uh, on the beach, because this is something I didn't know, but the seaweed that, um, that they collect on King Island actually is used um, for for, to make products such as toothpaste. So you're brushing your teeth with food, seaweed. <laughs> um, and one thing that we came across was a message in the bottle. This was um, probably the most exciting thing because um, it's something that you don't usually come across and uh, the people there uh, found it was a great find. Uh, certainly enjoyable. Um, the issues are uh, facing King Island. Um, First of all, rubbish in the Port Phillip Bay. Now, when the rubbish flows out of Port Phillip Bay, it goes through Bass Strait, and all this rubbish ends up going onto the King Island shores. And this is a problem because the, some of the species of birds, and not just birds, any other animals that have nests in low-lying areas, um, they can get affected uh, by that. Um, also, with people, locals on the island um, walking their dogs, sometimes they can tread on the nests. They sometimes let their dog off the leash and they might eat the birds or the eggs, which is a problem. Um, with global warming and rising sea levels, King Island is only, the highest point's only 136 metres above sea level. So, uh, by at least 50 years, they could be half underwater, but if you think about the other the other islands, because that's the second, second biggest island, you might be losing a whole lot of islands in Bass Strait. Um, and, over, and which was really, I thought, really scary is that over the last 100 years, um, King Island has lost five species of bird, uh, two, um, two big names, or three big names, I forgot to put one on there, is the King Island emu, two black cockatoo species, and the orange-bellied parrot. 
a very famous Australian bird and it's a stint on King Island. Um, some other stats. Uh, the, the APAB report in 2000 uh, found that seven endangered species on the island alone, five of which were end endemic to the island, which means that they are only found on that island. And this was staggering when I first looked at it and I just couldn't understand how it could be possible. Um, and famous birds like the yellow-tailed uh, black cover too, the mascot for the 2006 Commonwealth Games, that bird is also uh, endangered on King Island as well as, a, as the southern blue book and the uh, straighted uh, paddle boat. Uh, but also, but with the initiatives on King Island, this is why these people are so great, is that they set up uh, organisations like the, K, the KIN RMG Water Watch and the, the King Island uh, Cat Patrol Project, where they, um, they get funding from the Wildlife Foundation, the WWF, and uh, they get funding to, to set up initiatives and programs which Brighton Grammar ha um, assists, assists very well. Uh, focus on the trip, we do um, a feral cat uh, data collection, which is one of the biggest threats to bird species on the island. And what we do is we uh, track uh, uh, cat prints and we send them to the to the to the King Island uh, Conservation uh, Services, and they'll uh, make sure that we they try and fix the problem in those certain areas. Uh, the second uh, thing we do is water monitor monitoring, and we just check uh, if the water is okay that they're not bad, they're not poisonous or anything like that. And uh, sea uh, surge removal, which is another threat to, um, to the nests of birds in low-lying areas and um, to, to other uh, environments. Also, as, as a part of the sea change program, is to bond together as uh, mates. But the one thing I took most advantage of is actually reflecting on our lives back at home because when we go to King Island we're pretty isolated um, from our daily living. We don't have mobile phones or anything like that. And what we do at Cape Wick and Lighthouse is that we sit around in a group in the dark and observe these sort of surroundings and we talk about how our lives are different to how we're living them at, the, at the time on King Island. And one of the things we talked about was, oh, it's like how much, how much water do you use in the shower? I, I said, way too much. I was like, how many, how many times do you leave your light on when you leave the room? I said, way too many times. And ever since I've come back from King Island, I've been making sure that every light's been turned off. <laughs> Got to make sure every, that sh showers are kept short and getting my little brother out of the shower. <laughs> the hardest thing in the morning. Um, so what I learned, yeah, just a few pictures. Um, what we have here is like, um, all the sea spurge because we have, as part of the Brian Graham program, we have been able to get rid of all the sea spurge in the Cape Wickham area. Um, some other beautiful spots like Sea Island Bay, uh, that was a really good spot, it was very good for camping. Um, some a bit of a hike, uh, the river cross, which was very cold, um, particularly when the water is only about five degrees. Uh, and that photo there, worst photo of me, but <laughs> I, that was in the uh, for the sea change at the time right now. Um, I want to finish with a quote. Um, Miss uh, Sarah Bishop, who's here tonight, um, says that the opportunity you kids have is unbelievable. Now, when she, she's not only referring to, oh, you have science at school, you've got to make the most of this opportunity because who knows what you can become. But I think I took this on as a quote for how we could use this for our generation. The opportunity we have is unbelievable. Like, for all of us speaking here tonight, we have the ability to not only speak tonight, but also put our words into the ears of some of the best uh, people from the best sort of groups to really make a difference. And by taking this opportunity is uh, an opportunity that I wanted to do, and uh, I will continue to do um, in my youth. Thank you very much. Uh, if, over there, if you want to have a look at it, um, and King Island, if if you if you're game, have a go. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. You've obviously had a fascinating time while you were on the island. 
Um, does anyone have a quick question or would you rather wait till the end? Oh, what? yes, Matt, you better that? come back up. <laughs> come up, Matt. Yeah. You didn't tell us what happened to the message in the bottle. Oh, yes. Um, who sent it? Did you contact them? Oh, yeah, we did contact them on the last day and we did get a response um, from the actual beef. And uh, it, was, uh, it, was, uh, it was a woman that, uh, it, was, it was really weird and she's, and she was shocked as well when we actually rang her and uh, <laughs> what she said, I can't really say. Um, <laughs> it, was, it was not a lot of good ones. <laughs> yeah, 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 we'll say, oh, we'll I'll we'll just say that for now. Yeah. Where, where was she? Um, where did the bottle come from? Oh, well, okay. well, we're not sure because they, they say it was in a ship, sort of travelling somewhere. But uh, the, uh, the, mess, the bottle, they said that they made refuge at um, uh, Wilson's Pond. Oh, okay. So, yeah, that was actually, and then so it, it felt like a sort of piratey thing until we realised ring 04 or something. You know. <laughs> <laughs> and I think there was another. Yeah. What is sea spurge? Yeah, yeah sea spurge is um, sort of like it's, it's basically like a weed, and what it what it does is basically clog up the homes, uh, the nests, and low lying areas. And when it, it's hard for for it, it can get trapped because it's actually a stubborn weed. Because when we found we were removing it, it just it took a lot of effort just to get rid of it. And it also has a chemical like a poison which can actually kill. The uh, species, so that's why it's important that we remove sea spurge, and that's basically what it is.